that there were regions in China that were very similar to regions in Youngstown, Ohio, or Northeast Ohio, and the lessons that we were learning in terms of how to deal with that population contraction and how to deal with excess infrastructure were valuable to cities in China and were valuable to cities in Asia. And many of them came to Youngstown or, 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 or dispatch journalists or officials to come in to study the things that we were doing and the things that we were learning. What we also found that was probably most beneficial was it began to change the perception of the people who lived in the Mahoney Valley. People who I represent, people who I love, but people who can be some of the most frustrating people in the world. <clears throat> uh, being the most difficult to convince that there is good here. There are assets here. Sometimes it takes someone coming from the outside to help you recognize and appreciate and value what you have in your own hometown. But now even the cynics and even the critics in Youngstown and Mahoney Valley, even now they criticize, but they criticize in the context of Youngstown 2010. They criticize in the context of a plan, and that's productive criticism or constructive criticism. So again, it really opened our eyes to the fact that this is a city that is in the process of being redefined, not because of one, in the in the, one any individual elected official or business official. It's because we see an emergence of new leaders, and many of those new leaders are new or established leaders that have a different mindset, but many of them are young professionals that are really not stuck in the ideology of what the city once was or what the perceptions that people wanted to thrust on the city. When we see a resurgence of our downtown, downtown 50 years ago was a place where all the shopping, you got dressed up to go downtown, and then across the country we saw the emergence of malls and shopping plazas, and our downtown suffered, downtown Youngstown suffered like downtown Cleveland and downtown any major city USA. But the downtown now has become a destination point, a place where people want to work and to play, and recently in Youngstown, a place where people want to live. Uh, developers creating condominiums and apartments downtown, and they're being looked upon as desirable places by this emerging group of new leaders, which is bringing a new sense of vibrancy to downtowns all across the country. Now, we've been talking about new leadership as it relates to civic engagement. And as a mayor of a city that is dealing with a shrinking population, it's certainly principles and lessons that I've found to be very valuable. But these things are what we're finding universally applicable across many industries. Addressing these challenges with new leadership is something that I've had the privilege and opportunity to address in a variety of settings. As I make the transition, there was a book written in 2001 that was called Good to Great, and it was written by an author by the name of Jim Collins. It was a best-selling book that talked about companies who were sought to profile companies that had established a long-term trend of improvement after several years of lackluster performance. The book was billed by some as somewhat of a roadmap to success. Now, I'll let you in on a little secret between you and I. I'm, I'm not a best-selling author, so I'm in no position to criticize the book. And that's not my point here. My point is to illustrate that the book did provide some valuable insights to leadership and the culture of organizations, whether they're for-profit organizations like companies or not-for-profit organizations like governments and other organizations we have in our community. But the two things that, that really jumped out at me were two companies that were identified as success stories in that book less than eight or nine years ago. One of them was Fannie Mae, and the other one was Circuit City. And as we are now well aware, both of those companies have gone up in flames. And it's, I made the illustration to show the volatility of the time that our new leaders are emerging, that what looks like a sure thing in one minute can be gone in the next. But it also allowed me to say the mantra from good to great. And I remember the book when I was, actually I was out of college and I was in the business world and good to great was a mantra, good to great. We've got to take our organization from good to great. We've got to take our companies from good to great. And not that there weren't some valuable leadership principles in there, but it allowed me to make a segue to a mantra that I've been talking about to young leaders, and not that I've originated it, but it was something instead of going good to great, it was going from well to good. Last spring, I had the opportunity to address an emerging group of new leaders who were graduating with one of the centennial graduating classes of Youngstown State University. And as all newly minted graduates are ready to take on the world and embark upon that journey and draw those six-figure salaries, this was prior to uh, the economic turmoil that we're facing now. Certainly there were hints of it, but I can look at those faces and they look the same faces as I did. Happy to take those last final exams, happy to be free of, of whatever uh, 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 oversight that, that our professors and the guidance counselors had, 
and we were going to go change the world. And there was nothing wrong with that. That's an ambition that we absolutely need. But I also attempted to add some food for thought as they were embarking upon their journey of new leadership. And I see a lot of similarities with those graduates as I see here today. I commended them for having done all that was necessary to arrive at that point in life, to arrive at the graduation day and be moving into their new professions. And in fact, I told them that they had done very well for themselves. And I committed them for doing well. And I commend all the professionals here, the new leaders, for doing well. But I challenged them. I said, well, your next task is after doing well, I would like you to move from doing well to doing good. And I said, I know many of you are asking me, well, what's the difference? And I said, in my opinion, the difference is you do well for yourself as a leader, but you do good for others. And I cited examples. I said, well, you've done well to arrive at this place. You've studied. You've gotten your grades. And you're now graduating. But your obligation is now to take that knowledge and to take those studies and to take those skills and do good for others, making sure that you're sharing everything that you've learned and applying it in society to move from doing well for yourself to doing good. You have done well for yourself by exercising discipline and tenacity and navigating the pitfalls of those years in college. But you must do good by using that same tenacity by helping someone else in society as you emerge as a new leader. I said you have done well for yourselves by equipping yourself with the skills to pursue opportunities in your chosen profession. We all want to go out and be prosperous. There's nothing wrong with doing that and doing well for yourself and for your family. But you must do good to make sure that your chosen profession is going to improve the society or the condition of the lives of others. Now, as a new leader, whether you're graduating from college or a new leader here, dealing with a shrinking city, it's important that you set your vision beyond your current circumstances. I'll tell you with honesty that if all I saw was the vision of Youngstown as it existed right now, I don't know that I would have been eager to serve as mayor and deal with all the things that come with being an elected official. But if you set your vision, beyond your circumstances or beyond your condition, that becomes your motivation for leadership. That becomes the motivation that gets you through all the difficulties uh, that you will certainly face. Now, I told the graduates, as I say now, that despite what the economics of our, our country says and despite what all of the leaders are telling us is a very bleak and troubling future, that the world is truly in need of leadership, that there is a help wanted sign on the doors of society, whether it's society as you define Youngstown or Cleveland or Northeast Ohio or whatever your chosen profession is. Now, those positions aren't necessarily the positions that we historically or typically would have liked to think them, but leadership is always in demand. And new leadership and new thinking is needed now more than it's ever been. The world needs those who will stand up and speak for those that have no voice. The world needs those that will do that's right then instead of that which is politically expedient. And as I began to talk to them and share these things, I again admonished them that there was nothing wrong with going out and, and certainly for those that had college debts to pay off and were starting families, but to understand that in these economic times, we shouldn't be dissuaded by the fact that the starting salaries or the promotional opportunities or the advancement opportunities aren't necessarily what they would have been just a few years ago. New leadership is about finding those opportunities in those very challenging times. I also reminded them that as I began to close that there would be those opportunities to take the easy way out. There are always opportunities for leaders to make decisions that ultimately may not be in the best interest of the organization, but that may be personally beneficial. But as new leaders, if we're going to make a difference in our organizations or our companies or our shrinking cities, it's incumbent upon us to make sure that our mentality switches from doing well for ourselves to doing good for others. As I begin to close, I end with the same statement that I began with in talking about these very difficult times. And as new leaders, again, you'll find that your need and the desire for this type of leadership in shrinking cities, whether it's Cleveland, Ohio, Youngstown, Ohio, or any city across the country, or whether it's an organization, or whether it's a neighborhood, or whether it's a for-profit company, it doesn't matter, that the leadership that's needed now is different than the leadership that was needed just as recently as even five years ago. There will be great questions as to when this economic time will end. Well, there are some that says we're all sure that it will end, but the questions are when it will end and what do we do in the meantime. Those answers are clear that the new leaders that I'm talking to and the new leaders that I think are represented here will certainly be at the forefront of continuing to bring a sense of vibrancy and importance and relevance to our communities. 
I am encouraged by a lot of what's going on in Northeast Ohio with the Cleveland Plus campaign that was mentioned by Joe and Youngstown and Cleveland and Akron and Canton working together to uh, stem the brain drain and to make sure that we're cultivating talent. And a lot of that talent is here in this room.